There is a place in remote northern Australia that you may not have heard of. It's so spectacular, it's hard to believe, even when you're standing in the middle of it. It's prehistoric and dangerously wild, and the Aboriginal guardians of this land, the Yungal, are the oldest living culture on Earth, 50,000 years and counting. This is Arnhem Land, over 100,000 square kilometres of untouched wilderness and pristine waters and it's one of the best fishing locations on the planet. It's not just how big the fish get or how many there are, it's about the challenges involved in hunting them. This land is so vast and diverse that it will take a lifetime to fish and explore, which is what my best friend and I have decided to do. And this is where our story begins. I was seven years old when my father first took me into Arnhem Land, and from that first adventure, the course of my life was set. Fishing in wild places became the centre of my life, and still is today. Years later, I found myself working on a pearl farm out here for the sole purpose of being close to this land, and that's where I crossed paths with Simo, who by chance was doing the exact same thing. And from that moment on, our lives revolved around heading into this country together and learning all we could about the land, the people and the creatures that call it home. Morgs and I both live for adventure and we're about to embark on a big one. A long, challenging, continuous fishing trip throughout northeast Arnhem Land. Along the way, we'll be learning hunting and cooking methods off our Aboriginal friends who still partially live off the land in small communities called outstations that are scattered throughout the remote corners of this wilderness. These precious strongholds for the Yungle are embedded within the land itself and have deep meaning for the Aboriginal people. Although we've been heading out on these trips for well over a decade together, we feel the best fishing is still out there, somewhere. So we leave tomorrow morning on a month-long adventure to find some of the best fishing locations in the world. This is Nullan Boy. It's also known as Gove. A small town of about 1,500 people. It's actually located on one of the oldest constantly inhabited places in the world. It's a lovely little town. It's got a real great charm to it. And outside of being one of the most sensational fishing destinations on earth, there are other things that uh, draw people to Nulamboy. It's great sailing, great four-wheel driving, a great arts culture, an indigenous arts culture that's developed out of some of the the homelands around here and that's also something that brings a lot of international tourists and it's really accessible in terms of being so close to Darwin you're literally an hour's flight and get here by plane, by road, by barge. Work often brings people to Nulamboy but once they get here it's the charm and the accessibility to the outdoors that keeps them here for, for decades. Our first destination is a community on the banks of the pristine Caledon Bay. Gathalala Outstation is home to the Gumach clan, around 50 people who live a quiet life nestled in this beautiful part of Arnhem Land. But our sights are set even past Caledon. For many years, Simo and I have heard about an amazingly beautiful chain of islands that run out from the entrance of this bay. In possibly clear water, and one island in particular, rumoured to maybe have the best land-based fishing in the Northern Territory. So that's our goal, to find and fish Honey Island. We're just about to reach Guthalala community. This is one of my favourite outstation communities, but we're going to meet, hopefully, uh, a good mate of mine and footy foe, actually. We always play against each other. Uh, Camo. Yo! Birdie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, we're a bit slow, mate. All right. Yeah, we um, thought you might be hunting, not hunting. But, um, I'm no? just waiting for you guys. Yeah, you want to go <laughs> hunting? Yeah. <laughs> right. in there. Oh, right. What about camp? What about camp? The spear, or gara, is an important tool for the Yungle. It's a perfect hunting device for spearing all sorts of marine animals, 
and the shallow clear waters of Caledon Bay is a perfect environment for its use. It's a real privilege to be invited to spend an afternoon hunting these waters with these men. Witnessing their astonishing ability of this ancient hunting method is something you don't forget. Hey. Okay, so while we're, we're out on the flats, mm -hmm. a couple of little islands here off Guthalala, and we're with uh, a couple of footy mates of mine, Cameron and Bertie, and this is Kingsley, hanging out on the flats generally. On an incoming tide, it's pretty good, pretty good going, but uh, we'll see how we go now. Don't know, don't know, Yeah. <laughs> I've played on Cameron's footy team a number of times and when I ask him to run, he never does. That's as fast as I've ever seen him go. One of the most powerful swimming fish in the sea, milkfish. What do you know name for this? Um, uh, water, water, water. Water, water. You eat? Yeah, we eat this. Yeah. Fish, Look at this. Big fish. That's bad. Hang on. We caught a big fish. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, you want to kiss? <laughs> Good one, eh? Good face. Good lips, yellow. Good for kissing. <laughs> <laughs> You got a girlfriend, buddy? Mm, this one here. Yo. Put the leaves in the fire. Look at thick that. Put the leaves on the fire. Look at thick that. Make it up. Make it up. What's going on? Um, that's um, uh, number. 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 Yo. Then we'll cover it with the iron. iron. Then for a smoky flavour. Yep. A smoky nice. flavour. And this is just like a eucalyptus, <coughs> like a gum yeah. leaf, is yeah. it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Flesh down, skin up. I'll put them um, rocks on the top. Like that. Oh, okay, so you're creating hot rocks mm -hmm. in an underground oven sort of thing. Shovel, huh? From the roof of your house, Bertie. What, that iron? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's your new oven. Your new oven. oven. Yeah. You can hear it sizzling away there already. Right? Dylan. Uh, Dylan mean that's it. That's it? Dylan. You come back in 20 minutes. Dylan. Alright. That looks good. Mm -hmm. You eat the skin? Mm. Yeah. Eat everything. Eat everything. Eat eyes. Eat, eat eyeballs. Eat, eat eyes. Oh, eyes. oh wow. Mm. That is good. Mm. You can taste the um, leaves. Leaves, eh? Yeah. So you blokes know that I spoke to Mortara, the 
traditional owner here and she gave us permission to go out there. to go out to the last island mm. so we're going to go out there tomorrow nice. what's it like out there good fishing everyone says it's mm. be really good. beautiful one, two, where three, is it they said there's three three islands one two three it's the last one so That's when we the last island mm. what's the young young yaka what's the name of it um Wakola. 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 yeah the place cool all right all right Cool. I'm going to eat the eye. Don't miss that bit. What, what, am I eating that bit as well? Is yeah, that yeah. hard? Yeah, yeah. No. Chuck that one and eat that. Chuck this one? Yeah. This oh, soft one there. This is cornea. Eat it. Amish, eat this one. <laughs> eat it, Amish, eat it. Man, I ate that, man. No, nah, no. Nah, I got done in a, in a dare to do that a while ago. Okay. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that one again. <laughs> oh. How does it taste good? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, man, we can't thank you enough Thanks for today. Boys. That tastes beautiful. Let's get those kids. Good shot. Those kids can have a feed. Mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Mate. Good, Good shot. You, you throw a spear Good like take. you kick a goal. Matt, kids, go. What? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yay! Bulna, bulna, na, ka, ya, ka, na, ka. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Go <laughs> wild. Eat the eye. Tastes really good. <laughs> what does it mean that eye at the eye? Yeah, you get big eyes. Good. Really? Good. We'll wake up tomorrow. We'll wake up tomorrow. Morgs and I have been dragging this trusty old supply box through Arnhem Land for the last 10 years. And we reckon it's seen some of the best fishing spots that Australia has to offer. But now, we're heading out to a chain of islands that I've had a couple of mates who have been pretty privileged to get to and uh, they reckon it's as good as anywhere around here and saying that, as good as anywhere in Arnhem Land, we'd have to make it world class. You don't have to travel too far in Arnhem Land to get an understanding of its physical diversity. Within moments, you can move from mudflats to blue coral waters. It's a playground for the adventurous, and around every bend, there is something worth exploring. As we got to Honey, we discovered for ourselves how beautiful and diverse this island actually was. One half shallow coral reef, and the other pristine white sand beach. The only thing left was to find out if the fishing was as good as this place looked. Look at that water. Here and there, it's right there. Wow, this is as good as they said it was going to be. What about what about setting up camp and we'll, um, we'll fish tomorrow morning, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, I reckon. So today we're going to head over and fish that very pretty looking corner of this island. The island's not that big so we can walk over to the other side. So that's the plan for today. Over. Right Before we go out over to that over the hill, mm -hmm. we've got to have a flick on that corner there. Yeah. On the spit. We've noticed a lot of bait being smashed up around this whole area all the time. So we're going to have a fish off the end of this spit this morning before we do anything else. In fact, I'll show you how much fish activity Ooh. there is around here. I'm going to call it two casts. Alright, so this is another great example of another great fishing location. The sand spit comes out and as the tide is rushing out, it's going out the tide. Oh, it's coming in. Coming in. As the tide rushes in, it's bringing all the bait past this point. 
and there's a, there's a rock bar at the front of this which makes it even more impressive. So a lot of predators are just going to be hanging around here waiting for that bait to be pushed around and it's just a matter of coming up and um, stealing lollies from a baby as far as they're concerned. It's a biggie. <laughs> oh, there's one. There's one. Oh, oh! Whoa! He got me! Whoa! 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 Oh, my goodness. Whoa! 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 My thing isn't playing kids' games. Giant Trevally, and my cup of coffee is still warm. That was our very first cast, double hooker. And these are the bad boys that have been hunting all the bait that's been flashed around everywhere this morning. That oh, is a monster more. Oh, isn't it? That is a genuine monster. I mean, that's is a, a decent fish, but this one in particular has got a bit of size and a lot of girth, too. If you look down the barrel there, that's where his muscle is. Oh, he's heavy. There must be another hundred of these out there. Just hanging on the edge of that reef, waiting for bait to get washed over the top and absolutely slamming it. Look at those eyes. It's about those eyes too. They've just got such good vision, such incredibly efficient movers underwater. They can get so much speed. Impossible if you're a bait fish and these guys are locked onto you. It's all over. Anyway, better get them back in the water because we want them to live. That'll do us. That'll do us, eh? We are literally 150 metres away from camp. And to be able to do that is just very, very special. Anyway, that's northeast Arnhem Land. Let's put some proper gear on and walk across the other side. Yeah. All right. Look at that. There yeah. she is. Wow. What are we calling that? Cod Alley. Cod Alley? Oh, look at that, that is superb. It's completely protected by that rock wall. So, if that doesn't say cod and trout, I don't know what does. That looks like prime real estate for big, flowery cod. Look at all those rock holes. Oh, there's going to be some fish in that shallow water. Come on. Oh, no, this is the Rubik's Cube bit. <laughs> Simo and I have fished a lot of the north. We've come across pretty similar situations like this, and this says to us, big flowery cod. There's and a lot of advantages for the fish in this situation. Real shallow water, they live under all the bombies, so they're gonna try and fight dirty and take us and wrap us around a piece of rock and cut us off. But to our advantage, we're gonna stay nice and high so we get a better angle on our rod. Yeah, so these cod are under the rocks. They'll see these surface lures that will go on top of them. They'll rush out, bang them, and try to take us straight under it. It's a bar fight in here. It's sport fishing at its best. Come on, big boy. Yep, 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 there's one. Oh, oh. Well, here he is. Go, 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 go. Look at him, look at him. Here they come. There's two, three there. Three there. Three of them. Jesus, scared the hell out of me, Simpson. No, here no. we go, here we go. Can you see him in the corner there? There's three of them just three of them right just there. down there. Oh, here we go. Simo. They're a bit suspicious now. Oh, no. Man, I think you yell that too loud. I oh. heard it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yep, yep. Go, yep. Simo. Go, Simo. There he is. Head up. Get his head up. Get his head up. Oh, 
jeez, you knew you'd be a Get him up, mate. <laughs> You've won this one. Uh, wait. Simo. Don't let him get to those rocks. I'm not. Simo. Got him. He's on the rocks and out. Oh, got him. Oh. He's hand lining <laughs> him out. Ah, <laughs> uh, beauty. That's half mine. That's, That's half my catch. Oh. Yes. That. Is exactly what we thought we was gonna we we're gonna find here. Look at that flowery cod. Well, look at that. Look at that for a tail. That's like a flipper. Look how well camouflaged he is on these little bombies here, and look how shallow that is. That is a meter of water. So as the tide rushes out, all these mullet have to go that way. It's like a conveyor belt of food, and these blokes just hide behind rocks and do what they just did to Simo's lure. The analogy would be. They'd be a 100 metre sprinter. They, they sit under a rock all day and rest and don't do anything. And as soon as a bit of bait goes past, they ambush with all this power in their flanks and this massive tail. But as you can see now, after the race, he gone. is absolutely gone. He's spent. Another thing is his teeth are basically mechanisms to grab prey, then drag them back to the hole. They're not, they don't swallow the fish then and there. It's a matter of gripping them then ripping them back to the cave where they came from. Look, his teeth the whole way down, all the way down into his throat, into his esophagus, all backward pointing pincer teeth. So once you're in there, the only way you're going is that way. <laughs> he's, got, he's got coral in his mouth there. Possible, the... possible vegetarian. <laughs> Didn't want his girlfriend to find out he just hit a popper though. His <laughs> breath. <laughs> Get him, get him high, Simo, get him high! I'm going in! <laughs> now I'm stuck. That is amazing. The lure was in the water for no more than two metres. And the fish jumped on top of it. These guys are so active. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two man job, this. Two and two casts. This is, I'm enjoying this more than, more than catching them. Like a, you're like Hunt, a hunting, I'm like a sheep, sheep like, station dog. Like a sheep dog. Sheep dog. Go on, get back. Get around. Get around, go back. Uh-oh. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, oh. Come on. Come on, straight away there. <laughs> no. I got him. I got get him. Up He's high, get up high, get up high. Best I turn away here. Best I turn away and not smile at his face. It's like never looking directly into a lion's eyes at this stage. Walk away. All right, Simo, what about that? That'll do, eh? That whitewash is just where obviously bait has just been pushed around unwillingly, yeah. kept in a sort of a washing machine environment and they're just plucking them off. Absolutely brutal fighters though. Alright, I'm stuffed. Let's do it. Alright. Gotta walk back. We'd found and fished honey, and as we sat on this island 30 kilometres off the coast, our sights were now looking deep inland for our next journey into the freshwater billabong system, where Australia's most iconic sports fish, the barramundi, reigns supreme. Yeah.